Hello everyone, Diamond here with Avatrade, and uh, we are about to start our weekly trading plan webinar. And uh, before we go any further, first of all, that uh, I hope that you had a great week and uh, you are enjoying your weekend, getting ready, getting energized for the upcoming week. Uh, it's been an interesting week on the market and in general, and uh, hopefully we'll have uh, another great week that's coming up. So before we go, I just wanna read as usual the risk warning and it goes following. Any capital markets and trading information disclosed in this webinar is provided for informative purposes only and should not be construed or applied as investment advice a recommendation or a suggestion. CFDs are complex instruments and come with high risk of losing money rapidly due to leverage. 71% of retail investor accounts lose money when trading CFDs with this provider. You should consider whether you understand how CFDs work and whether you can afford to take the risk or high risk of losing your money. And you can find the, the full disclosure statement on avatrade.com. Um, of course, again, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, for those of you that this is your first time, basically the purpose of uh, our weekly webinar is to get ready for the upcoming week. And again, I'm gonna repeat it every time. There's a saying that goes as following, it was you plan your trade and then you trade your plan. Because without a plan, market is hard as it is. And if you don't have a plan, your chances are not really that great. If you're just um, being impulsive or spontaneous or just run after certain things that you were not really planning. And I can speak from my experience uh, I've been involved in trading for over 21 years. And uh, when I do make my plans and I do follow them, they don't always work 100%, but it gives me structure. It gives me uh, a peace of mind and direction in my trading. And that's what I hear from people that are successful and they do the homework, they write the plan in the weekly, daily, whatever the structure of the trading is, and then they ex execute the plan. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, this is the information for the social media that you can um, access for uh, contacting and uh, information. There's uh, Twitter at Avatrade, and of course on the YouTube channel, you can find a lot of tutorials for the platform. You can find uh recordings of other webinars including fundamental analysis and technical analysis a lot of very useful information and this is our agenda for today we'll look through some indices we'll look through some forex pairs some commodities some stocks okay let's let's begin and uh before 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 we go into the platform uh, what I would like to to really get you into a habit of following or, or actually accessing the information of the upcoming week as far as economic calendar. And I'm not going to show it here because you can use, there's a lot of uh, information, that you can, a lot of uh, sources for economic calendar. You can choose the one that works for you. And I'm just going to browse through it really quickly. And I don't see anything on Monday the 13th of September. Then on Tuesday, we have um, uh, some uh, speeches from the governor of the uh, Bank of Australia. So the Australian dollar might be in play. We have uh, unemployment rate from uh, UK. So that, that would be affecting um, the indexes, the, the FTSE index, of course and uh, the pound potentially. We have uh, what's important on Tuesday, we have the CPI numbers from the states. That's the inflation numbers that are very, very important. So that's all Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, we have some housing and retail sales from China. I'm not sure how important that thing is. 
that we have more CPI numbers uh, from uh, UK, which is very, very important. Uh, just just to on the fundamental part to remind everybody that we are in the times now where central bank banks are, are preparing for increase in the interest rate and the inflation numbers are very, very important in uh, their decision making in that area. Okay, so that's CPI numbers from UK on Wednesday. Also, of course, we have um, mortgage application from the US and we have Canadian um, numbers as far as inflation. The CPI numbers for Canada, very, very important. It's all on Wednesday. And Thursday, we have uh, employment data from Australia. So this is the second uh, data from Australia within one week. And we have retail sales, which it is important from the States, US retail, st uh, retail sales. And then Friday, we have a Michigan Consumer Sentiment Index. That's that's a very, very important thing. Okay, so, uh, and the retail sales from the UK. So you can uh, take some time and also make it a habit to, when you make a plan for the week, just look for economic calendar for any specific announcements that you'll be uh, prepared for, okay? And, um, uh that's just make a note some people like to put in the calendar with the reminder just give you an example you know of course something like nfp non-farm payrolls that happen usually the first friday of the month in the us that's the most uh, uh, powerful announcement uh, within a month that's happening so we all remember that and uh, there are some other announcements and and uh uh, events that are taking place, it's very, very important to be aware how serious uh, they are, how they will be affecting the markets. Uh, we don't really know, but just the fact that we are prepared for those announcements, it just helps us to understand things when you see uh, out of nowhere certain spikes in the markets up or down and you, you're not prepared. So knowing that it's either uh, will attract you to certain trades or uh, the opposite. It might tell you not to be in the position, not to open any trades prior to the news or during the news and wait till things are settled. Okay, so that's as far as economic calendar. So let's switch now. I'm going to switch to the MT4 platform. And uh, we'll go through some instruments in a moment. Okay. So we, we said uh, that we'll, we'll be looking through indices. And again, uh, we analyzed uh, the past week, which was um, uh, a pretty, uh, pretty uh, bad week for indices for equity markets. And uh, as you could see here on the weekly chart, uh, the whole week is in red. We had uh, see on daily chart, Monday was a holiday in the States. And then we went straight, four days straight down. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and then we closed at the lows. Another thing, we crossed the 20 day moving average, which is uh, some kind of a signal there. And uh, here we entered in, into the channel, descending channel, we, went, we entered into it. We could be easily uh, going lower to retest lower levels, maybe the bottom of the channel. So this is the S&Ps. Um, the indicator, of course, uh, would be the close of Friday. I'm sorry, not the close, but the low of Friday, which was uh, 44.56 and a half. So we can draw the level there from which we bounce. And if we go and start uh, breaking this level to the downside that and start seeing some uh, 15, 30 minute, one hour chart uh, candles closing below, we would see that the support is turning into resistance and there could be an opportunity on the downside. The same thing if we are holding these levels, for some reason would they stop here? and we start building some strength, 
and some fundamental support comes in, we could see a little bit of a correction. But it looks like on the weekly chart, uh, we could we could be easily starting um, a much uh, stronger correction to the downside. Like like I said, it could be potentially going to the bottom of the channel. So that's S and P 500. Um, Dow Jones, US 30, similar scenario. Here we didn't break through 20 moving average. We're sitting right on it. Okay, so we'll see what happens there. And uh, we'll bring NASDAQ. NASDAQ is the strongest out, out of all of them. And on the weekly chart, we didn't break the previous week's low. So this is something to pay attention to. to. And um, the low here of the, of the last week was uh, 15,419 and a half. And uh, low here was 433. It's about... Uh, 12 13 dollars higher than the low so the low of last week would be potentially a trigger to a further selling down and we'll be watching that level and we're really close to it uh we mentioned that some economic data coming out of uh of uk and that includes um inflation data so we'll look at FTSE and as you could see FTSE has been weak we last week we we kind of uh, um, reset the previous two weeks of attempt of going higher and we did close below uh, 20 moving average and that's on weekly chart and on daily chart it looks it looks very weak here so um, again if we were to look to short um, the FTSE 100, we want to see a move below Friday's low, which was uh, 69.90 and a half, and some price action uh, building, uh, confirming the new resistance. As as until now, for a while, it was a support here was here a lot of action take a look all the tails hitting this level it's a very serious level here from here we made the new high pretty much the same one one to one level and uh, we'll be watching it it's very very interesting what's happening and uh, if we're already here let's just take a look quickly um for the same matter we'll, we'll look at the pound and the pound it looks weak as well Okay, so that's uh, FTSE. Let's take a look at German index, DAX 30. It was also uh, a weekly a sell-off that kind of across one, two, three, four, five weeks of trading in one week. And similar idea, uh, we want to see, actually Thursday we were lower and Friday we closed a little bit higher. So there is a potential of moving lower to the lower levels on DAX. We'll be watching that. CAC 40. Okay, we spoke about this uh, index a few times. And this was the previous level of resistance from which we bounced lower. And then we broke through it. And then we played. There's a lot of actions around this level. It's a quadruple six. Tick six, six, six. Interesting. So are uh, we trading, uh, we're closing or closed on Friday below it. And this could be uh, a sign of weakness and uh, continuing moving lower. And that's what we'll be watching. So basically, if you zoom in the four hour chart, if there is a bounce on, on Monday, and if this level is holding 6666, and we start seeing some strong resistance here, it could be a potential to uh, entering a short trade with, of course, with the goal to close lower with the profit. This could be probably a next level or the first take profit here, or potentially we could go lower. It depends how the global markets are doing in general. Uh, we spoke about Nifty. Nifty 50 is a champion, it's holding. And uh, take a look after this move up. We actually had an up week. 
very small difference between uh, the open and close. 17,358, 17,364. Six dollars higher than the open on the weekly on the weekly chart. It's still strong. So again, if the markets are selling, the global markets are selling, uh, it could be that this one will start pulling in, even though they have a very strong fundamentals, the GDP numbers are very strong. And that was the reason why uh, the index was going up tremendously. So we'll be watching it anyway. Very interesting story here. Um, Nikkei, Nikkei had a hard time breaking this level here. After it's been weak, had a very strong up, catching up with the U.S. indices. And uh, this uh, 30,000, 38 level, let's say 30,000, it became a hard one to, to break through with all these tails. And the last one was on Friday with a huge tail breaking the previous level where we stopped right here. But we did close uh, way lower. So it could be a sign of at least a uh, temporary re reversal or correction to the downside. Okay, so that's as far as indices. Just to summarize, there's a potential of continuation to the downside. There's a lot of fundamental, there a lot of fear, of course, of COVID and this Delta variant. Uh, some countries and places are in lockdown and uh, there's some fundamentals. And we'll be talking about uh, Apple stock when we get to the stock. But uh, in, in general, there's uh, uh, some uh, bad news on Apple, which sold on Friday. The stock sold about 3.3%. And there's some other events that are pushing the market to the downside. And of course, fear of tapering and potential increase in interest rates. So let's move to uh, Forex pairs. And we'll start with dollar index, as usually, as usual. And uh, it, it's a lot of actions here. And uh, the daily chart is showing uh, that we we sold out after the recent attempt to go to the new highs. And then we came to the level of 92, 92.10. And we confirmed this support over here. Then we broke, we went all the way to 92.50, closed higher. And we're pretty much sitting around 92.50. So this is the level that if we're holding, we could go and start moving higher uh, to kind of a, a third retest or recent retest of uh, 93.45. So uh, judging by the last day of Friday close, uh, we could see a continuation to the upside on a dollar, on US dollar potentially. So we'll be watching that. And um, I, I looked through a few pairs that uh, I want to bring bring out. So USD ZAR, uh, I think we spoke about it last week. And USD ZAR uh, really sold out uh, strongly since the recent move. So this was uh, uh, 28th of August, and we just dropped sharply down. And um, we came to these levels around between uh, 14 and 14.20. And the last two days, we had a few attempts to go lower, but we closed higher. And Friday was an up day as well. Uh, so it looks like all these tails that you can see, they were trying to get the stops. And uh, the buyers came in and they brought it up. So uh, there is a potential of a reversal on the USD czar and something to look uh, the, into upcoming week for a potential move. This is a four hour chart. We came straight to the 20 moving average and uh, we closed on the highs of the day. As you could see after the selling attempt, let's see how one hour chart. Yes, we closed pretty much uh, the highs of the day. And uh, this is the one hour chart. So we're facing this uh, resistance here, 1422. So uh, 1422, 1425, if we get out of this area here, there's a potential opening up for the higher levels on USD ZAR. Uh, let's take a look at uh, GBP CAD, something that caught my attention. I wanted to bring it up to you. 
uh, we were in the channel for a while. There's a lot of actions here, 171 area, and 175.85, that's that was the stop after which we really sold out. This is a daily chart. So uh, we on the way up there to retest it. We're about uh, 30 to 40 pips to that level. Uh, we might not get there and uh, choose to to tip over and go and go lower. We don't know, or we might go and play with these levels. So something to tip to pay attention to. We had a little bit of an attempt here with this huge spike here, but we did close lower here. So interesting level to see, and you could see why uh, I draw that level here. We 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 dropped from the same level here and here and here. So we're kind of at the triple top and we couldn't break it. So let's see what this time will bring. Uh, again, there's always a chance that we could break through it and start establishing support and uh, that would open uh, a field for the move higher. And on the monthly chart, it is possible. On the weekly chart, take a look, the same level, how many tem attempts to break, we couldn't break it. So we'll be watching, we'll be watching this one. Uh, USD CAD had uh, a recent move from 25, 24. Uh, it's about 150, 160 pips move. Uh, we tried to go about 127. We came back in, so we could be going to retest it if the dollar gets strong here. Again, we need to be watching what's happening on on the Canadian dollar side, and there's some news coming out this week as well. So we'll be watching that. And use the knock, Norwegian Krona. Uh, it, it's been sitting here after the sell-off and not really doing much. Small attempts. Uh, it's really, it's really small. You could see the whole week, almost two weeks. We, we've been in a very narrow corridor here, and that's a sign that uh, it, it's, it's going. Some build-up is happening here, and we should go somewhere again. Uh, Nobody knows where exactly, but if you look at the fundamentals, yes, of course, dollar can get stronger. We can go higher here. But remember, I mentioned in one of the webinars, they said that uh, we in September now and uh, Norwegian Central Bank, they were uh, planning on increasing the interest rate and that would potentially bring the value of Norwegian Krona high. And maybe that's the move that has been reflecting it. Okay, so we'll be watching. A price action on this and let's just take a quick look on the major pairs really quick uh, I look through them I don't see anything special but uh, euro dollar uh, we we going to retest 1800 so we'll see how 1800 will hold we came from 19 a fail uh, triple top you can see it uh, like that, okay. A lot of attempts here, failed attempt, failed attempt. So we're down to retest 1800, uh, 118. Let's see what happens there. We're not gonna guess. Pound, we spoke about pound. Uh, we rejected the 138.76. We're on the way down potentially. Let's see if we find support at 138. And this is the channel again that a lot of action's been happening pretty much within the 138 to 139 area. Uh, New Zealand dollar had a strong resistance at 171.54, 171.50 area, and we kept on bouncing back from it. So we could be, again, with the US dollar getting stronger, uh, we could see the move to the downside here. Australian dollar, uh, we spoke about this level 7371, 73.71. A lot of actions here, strong resistance. Uh, recently, we tried to lift it, it. Tried to lift its head higher. We made actually a hundred pip move, but we came right back, which is uh, a weakness uh, that's happening here. So it's probably going to be a lot of uh, churning here. We'll be watching what's happening until uh, we'll see a, a clear direction. And uh, USD yen. Nothing's happening here. A lot of really choppy trading, and we're sitting right on the 20 moving average on the weekly and daily as well. Uh, Thursday was a sell off, Friday was a little bit of attempt to, to go higher. Nothing major is happening here. Okay, so that's as far as uh, currencies. Uh, we're going to move now to commodities, and uh, let's start with. 
natural gas, something we discussed, natural gas uh, finally had a small uh, move down after all this crazy move up over here. And uh, we spoke about it, that we came to 489.50. Uh, we just easily went through it, like through the border. And we touched uh, five, we even higher, 5056. And on the daily chart, let's take a look. It looks like we're finding some kind of a resistance here. So it's very interesting. Um, to rush into it and short it, uh, maybe. If you do uh, zoom in on the four hour chart, uh, at least if you choose to short it, you have some kind of a reference for your stop, would be the highs of the recent move. And um, we'll be watching what happens. And of course, we'll be watching inventories. I think Thursday will be inventories on natural gas as far as the fundamental part of it. Uh, it's very interesting. Let's see one hour chart. Uh, we, we have, we're having a strong uh, resistance here around 504, 505 area. But uh, in order for us to, to look for, for some confirmation of the re reversal, we would need to really break this level uh, 490, 489 and start building some price action below this level. Uh, we'll be watching it. So it's gonna be a very interesting week for natural gas again take a look on this robust move. And uh, crude oil, crude oil had an up week. And on the daily chart, uh, we we kind of uh, went above the previous level from which we sold out, around 69.50, 69.60 area, we closed higher. And uh, it was a very strong day, a strong candle here. So we'll be watching on a potential attempt to bounce higher and retest some higher levels where we don't know. Um, we probably wanna see how it plays over here. This is four hour chart, and this is the strong candle that stopped around 70 and a half. So it's about a dollar higher. And take a look on the four hour chart. It's very in interesting how you could see a clear uh, channel that's been bouncing. So for those, traders that uh, are day traders, um, short-term traders, uh, scalpers. Uh, there was a nice a nice channel here for about uh, $2 up and down and it's been working so far. And now it's the second time we are above this level. So we could be potentially going a little bit higher. So we'll see what oil is doing. Uh, let's take a look at uh, metals. Gold uh, has been selling. And uh, on the weekly chart, uh, take a look at this level, 1830, 1831. We spoke about this level, I think, last week. We refused to break through it, and we're selling off. We broke the 1812, and we broke the 18 psychological level, and we're on the way down. And we closed on the lows on Friday. So potentially, this could mean that we, we could continue going higher and, and try to find some support. Uh, the next level, something that makes sense, would be around 1860. It's about 27, 28 dollars from from the current price. And let's see what's happening after that. If we do break the 1760, it just opens a possibility for for it going lower to the recent lows. And this was uh, the beginning of August, a month ago, only a month ago. And uh, there was uh, the low of that week was 16.69. It's about $110 lower. So it could be a potential of retesting this level. We're not gonna guess what happens after that because this was a strong level here. We bounced from here, making new highs. We retested it here successfully. It didn't break through and then we retested again, but we did refuse to go higher from this last retest and we're probably gonna go and retest it again. So gold potential uh, move down, of course, the opposite scenario could happen as well. Uh, palladium, uh, it's, uh, it's selling uh, hard and um, let's take a look. Wow, daily chart, take a look over here. We just went straight down without any bounces. 
and uh, this was the level that was kind of a supporting here and we broke through it so next level i don't really know uh, i mean i'm not gonna guess here but this could be the level here that we're close to but uh, i don't see it as a strong level it's just in the air so potentially we could go as low as 2000 or 1900 whatever it is we're not gonna guess so the first thing we want to see is how monday is going to play with the low of that day which we tried to bounce the last hour okay and the low the low was 2115.70 so palladium it could be two scenarios of course <laughs> i'm not a genius uh we can continue selling or we can bounce and uh, have a little bit of a correction there uh, copper uh, interestingly enough uh on a sell-off on the market copper went up the, the last day of the week and that was friday very strong move higher uh, i really don't know what's the reason but that's a little bit of a little bit strange so it could be it could be getting the stops out it could be anything we're not gonna guess here but um it's gonna be interesting to watch uh, what's happening here on copper because the level that we broke through 936.97 was a very strong level take a look we bounce from here we bounce from here we had a lot of actions here and here and then uh on friday copper just decided to go higher without any uh hard time really so it's going to be interesting to watch uh the friday highs uh it could be a potential selling there or let's see how the price action plays it's very interesting so the high of friday 446.55 We'll be watching what happens there. Okay, so that's copper. And um, let's just uh, take a look at uh, something we spoke about last week. Corn uh, is actually played nicely. For those of you that looked into a scenario of a head and shoulder, we said if it breaks 527, and it did confirm a few uh, tails here on the resistance. And it was a very nice, uh, whoever caught this move was a very nice move. And we're on the way up now. We could be going retesting it. We could be continuing uh, resuming that move down. But it's it, it looks very interesting, and it kind of uh, corresponds to the scenario that we spoke about, right? Remember, head, shoulder, equal shoulders, right and left, and we broke through the neck. Uh, soybeans, similar scenario. We broke through this level of support. We retested it on Friday. And we could be continue going lower as well. And wheat has been selling off as well. So all the, all the three of them as a group, they're weak. So that's as far as commodities. And uh, before we go to stocks, I just want to quickly, because I don't want to forget it. Um, let's take a look at Bitcoin. Uh, we spoke about it. If it breaks 50, it opens the uh, field to go higher. And there's some fundamentals, the famous El Salvador that first accepted the current uh, Bitcoin as his national currency now decided to drop it. So that's one of the things, and there are a few other fundamental things that brought um, Bitcoin below 50. And we actually sell. Uh, we we went. Uh, there was a one-day move right here. We went as slow on the 7th of September. Went as slow as. 42,997. So we went below 43,000, and then we tried, but uh, there's no, there's no energy so far to go higher. And it looks like this 44, 43 level is so far a support. And let's see what happens. Ethereum, similar idea. We touched 4,000, and then we've been selling off, and we came back. Remember, we spoke about this level 31.80. We couldn't break it to the upside. And now it's actually a support that so far is holding. So 3180 support. Uh, let's see what happens. If we break lower, if we go lower, if we hold it, and there will be some fundamentals uh, for it to go higher, it could continue. So that's cryptos. And let's take a look at a few stocks before we wrap it up. Uh, the first thing I mentioned, Apple. Okay. Apple, take a look what happened on Friday. That's the announcement with uh, something that I mentioned a few weeks back that uh, 
the US uh, regulators or justice, whoever it is, uh, they brought up the case in court, uh, antitrust case about the App Store and then about uh, a Google uh, Store as well, as far as monopoly on the applications. And Friday was a strong sell-off. This sell-off, it's 3.3%. Uh, and we are in there, something that I mentioned before, that Apple had a hard time breaking 150 and then it went higher, but we closed uh, below it again. And uh, 148.55, and that's the low of the day, of course, the low of the week. And uh, just for you to understand that uh, uh, for Apple, the App Store is a huge source of revenues. And, and if there are going to be any changes, uh, definitely will affect the revenues and the bottom line of of the company. So definitely will affect the the price of shares, which already did right now. So we'll see uh, what happens as far as uh, publications and announcements on Apple. Potentially, if we're holding here below 150, we could go and uh, sell uh, further down to some levels. We don't know what's going to happen. And let's take a look at Google. What Google did. Similar idea it was a sell-off on Google on the same day, and we came to a 20-day moving average. And uh, I don't see any supports here, so I guess Google can easily go down uh, until the, at least this level that was a resistance previously, 27.63. So there's a potential to the downside there. So that's Google and Apple. And uh, let's take a look at Tesla. Tesla had, had some nice moves this week. But then on Friday, when the market sold, Tesla went down with it. And that's something what I always say, even the best stocks on the down day when the market is selling off, they will be going down, maybe not as strong as others, but uh, the gravity takes over. So again, we went, we tried uh, this uh, 763 level, and this is the level of this high candle here exactly and uh, Friday was selling off. So we're on the way to retest the previous level that we couldn't break out. That's uh, 726, 727, that's on Tesla. Uh, let's take a look at a few others. Facebook, uh, 383 level, we couldn't, we couldn't break it on, on two attempts. And Friday was a selling day, not as strong as to Google and Apple. And uh, if we do go lower, this uh, 375, that was the previous level where we stopped, it could be a test uh, if we hold it for support or if we flip below it, uh, it could become resistance. So Facebook could see some moves down. Uh, let's take a look at Alibaba. We spoke about Alibaba and bounces. Nothing's happening, very choppy, nothing. And let's finish with the two pharmaceuticals. There's a lot of development going on here. Remember we spoke about Pfizer, that we got approval for the third uh, booster, the third injection from FDA this, that will start on the 20th of September. And so far, uh, Pfizer doesn't find any energy to go higher here. We failed uh, to hold this 46.30. We're going lower now. And uh, let's see how we're holding this 45 level. And Johnson & Johnson, similar ideas we've been selling. And we came to the support here as a strong level of 166, 167. A lot of actions here, 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 here. Strong resistance, flip to support, support. And we could see support again here, 166, 167 area. That's also, in general, uh, some announcement that we spoke about, markets potentially moving lower on the fear of COVID and upcoming changes with the central banks. And uh, we'll see how this week plays out. I wish everyone an amazing week. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy. All the best. Take care.